let's talk about the only carbohydrate that will not influence insulin. Now, as you may know, insulin is the hormone that makes you fat. It's the hormone that prevents you from burning fat, and it's a fat storing hormone. So in the presence of even a little bit of insulin, it's going to be very difficult to lose weight and get into ketosis. So the only carb that has absolutely no influence over insulin is fiber, okay? Now the problem with fiber is it normally comes with other carbs that do influence insulin, as in the bread, pasta, cereal, crackers, biscuits, waffles, things like that. And so many times people are recommending those foods because it has fiber. But what about the other carbs that are not fiber? We want to stay away from them. Now, just as a side note, pure fat will also not increase insulin. But what does increase insulin is the sugar, the starches, and excessive amounts of protein. So is it just a matter of getting some fiber, maybe some Metamucil in a spoon, and then pour some pure fat on it, right? No. The type of fiber that you need is in the non-starchy leafy greens. It's in the vegetables. And this is why you don't have to count non-starchy vegetables when you're doing the ketogenic diet as a part of your grams of carbohydrate. Normally you want to keep your carbs below 30, maybe 40 grams, maybe even 20 grams, but I don't recommend even counting the non-starchy vegetables like the salads and things. In fact, unless you have some intestinal damage or inflammatory condition that causes bloating when you eat a lot of vegetables, I recommend you do add a good amount of vegetables as part of a healthy keto plan. And I'm talking at least seven cups. It's not that much. It's like a nice sized salad. But what do these vegetables give you besides fiber? Well, it gives you uh, minerals, potassium, magnesium to prevent cramps when you start the ketogenic diet, to prevent keto fatigue when you start the ketogenic plan. Also, these vegetables have trace minerals. They're loaded with vitamins like vitamin C, folate, other B vitamins. They have a tremendous amount of phytonutrients which go beyond just the regular vitamins and minerals. Phytonutrients are anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory, and they will help prevent a lot of different issues. But as far as the fiber in the vegetable, that is the food for your microbiome, for your friendly bacteria. That's what they eat. And then they turn that fiber into a type of fat. It's called a small chain fatty acid, as in beta hydroxybutyrate, which is a ketone. So butyrate made from your microbes is in the family of ketones. So microbes eat the fiber and they make compounds that help lessen insulin resistance, which is directly gonna help you lose weight because they also help lower blood glucose. They can actually increase insulin sensitivity which will then make it easier to lose weight, which means your body won't have to make as much insulin, and that's gonna help your weight loss. The fiber also increases the diversity of microbes, which will have another positive effect on weight loss. All right, thanks for watching. Hey, before you go, if you're benefiting from any of my content, I would love to hear about your success story. Please share it in the link down below.